Clothes and technology are part of what we call culture. In evolutionary terms, this includes everything we do that isn't instinctive, everything we have to learn. From crossing the street to reading. Today, thanks to culture, we can once again choose our mates based on something other than the color of their skin. Thanks to culture, our chromosomal wealth and the possibilities for the survival of our species can be further expanded. But culture is not all powerful. It's true that some people have been able to reproduce with the help of test tubes, but if possible, the majority of us prefer to take a more traditional path. That's why we haven't completely forgotten our wild side. Especially the majestic wild side of the male. We know it's the females who choose who should reproduce and who shouldn't. These decisions can be evident or subtle, indirect or even apparently indecisive, but it's the females who ultimately choose. Their methods occasionally make it seem as if those males were merely passive objects, completely passive. And even though our activity is not always frenetic or continuous, let's not be too critical. Suggesting that the techniques we use must be presumptuous, direct, and quite simple doesn't mean that we mustn't use our little hearts and minds. Even though they are different from those of a female, they can be used to think like one when it's truly necessary. The thing is, we may have overestimated the organ of thought. So much reasoning when the thing we desire is so obvious, and when our desires coincide with what is necessary for the species. The clearest proof of the presence of striking young males in the multiplication game is that we can be found arguing, threatening, and even fighting with our peers, often putting our very lives in danger. We use up every drop of energy we have so that after this big sacrifice, only a few actually get to carry out the fleeting, longed-for chore. Whether one of Darwin's fundamental lessons or a part of God's game, machismo is a huge error. In terms of evolution, everything we do as males is directed toward impressing and taking care of females. Everything in our lives is done for them. We are organisms that are completely dedicated to females, or we should be. Those who don't accept that will be chosen less often and in the end will be condemned to disappearing from the evolutionary program. The pity is that sometimes evolution is too slow for our taste. But we should know that the way we behave with our prospective partner will also be tested and evaluated. That is, depending on how we behave, we may be chosen or cast aside.
We don't know what a female praying mantis looks for when being courted. It should be solely a question of biology, considering that the male won't be helping her raise her offspring. But good manners are quite important here. If this male praying mantis doesn't have good boxing moves, he might be gobbled up by the female. The female has clearly misunderstood the love letters sent by her suitor. It's through this bestial strategy that natural selection rejects any male that may have acted too hastily, not leaving enough time for proper introductions. Individuals are rejected when they don't send a favorable ethogram, meaning that they didn't make a good approach and so were not identified as the ideal candidate. The female saw him as an enemy or simply as prey. His genes will not be passed on. Cannibalism is one of those matters which highlights the fact that the behavior of animals in the wild cannot be used to justify human behavior. It's also extremely clear that evolution takes many other things into consideration in addition to size and physical appearance. Behavior is fundamental, and so is experience. Behavior that includes raking the bottom of a lake with one foot to look for prey. This is not written out in full detail on the genes carried by this heron. Some things must be learned and others must be practiced and perfected over an entire lifetime. Thanks to this fact, it's not only the largest and most beautiful that procreate, but also the best lovers, good hunters, the hardest workers. Even the cleanest candidates count. For higher orders of animals, training and experience often determine the kind of sexual interaction practiced by each species, and even each group within a particular species. There are examples of polygamy, monogamy, and even your everyday single mother. Let's go in order from simplest to most complex.